you've been waiting for GCSE Geography Predictions, we've got you. Our brand new 2025 AQA GCSE Geography Predictive Papers are now live, thanks to our amazing geography teacher, Daisy. They include exam style questions covering all key topics, mark schemes to show you exactly how to hit those high marks, and full video walkthroughs explaining how to structure and improve your answers, and then pre-release questions with guidance so you know exactly how to tackle that unfamiliar resource. These resources are designed to take the stress out of geography so you can really focus on the understanding, linking case studies, and showing off everything you've learned. As always, don't forget to revise everything you feel uncomfortable with, as these are just predictions, of course. Please don't forget that. Absolutely, though, feel free to use this as a starting point for your revision. So do also use timestamps for each paper so you can skip to the bit that's relevant to you. Now, first up, we're, of course, going to start with AQA GCSE Geography Paper 1 predictions. So here's what to focus on. So first up, we have tectonic hazards. And it's the first predicted topic on our list. Focus on the causes, effects and responses to earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. It's essential to know the difference between primary and secondary effects and between immediate and long term responses. Case studies will involve comparing an LIC or NEE such as Nepal 2015 with a HIC like Chile 2010. You'll also need to understand plate boundaries and why people choose to live in hazard prone areas, applying the three P's prediction, protection and planning. Next, our teachers are predicted adaptation to climate change. Here, focus on how we live with climate change rather than how we stop it. You should know examples of agricultural adaptation like drought resistant crops, methods for managing water supply such as desalination and rainwater collection, and ways of coping with rising sea levels, including seawalls and managed retreats. Be ready to explain why adaptation is needed and link to specific regions or strategies from case studies. We then suggest focusing on the impacts of tropical storms. Here you must understand the structure and formation of tropical storms, as well as how climate change might affect their frequency and intensity. A named example like Typhoon Haiyan is crucial. Be sure to include primary and secondary effects, along with immediate and long term responses again. Use terms such as storm surge, high winds and flooding and be prepared to evaluate the effectiveness of the responses. Next, we have deforestation. Here, the focus is on tropical rainforests, especially the Amazon. You need to know the causes such as logging, farming, mining, road building. Impacts include loss of biodiversity, climate change and displacement of indigenous people. Make sure to learn sustainable management strategies like selective logging, ecotourism and debt reduction. And of course, use data and examples to support your answers. We stop there's economic development in desert and cold environments. Here you will need to use Thar Desert and Svalbard Arctic as case studies. Understand the opportunities such as tourism, mining and energy and the challenges, including extreme temperatures and accessibility. Be able to explain how development is managed sustainably in these harsh conditions and link it to the fragility of these environments and the impacts of human activity. Our geography teacher has also predicted coastal erosion and here you must understand erosional processes like hydraulic action, abrasion, attrition and solution. Be able to explain the formation of features such as headlands, bays, caves, arches and stacks using a named UK example like the Holderness Coast. Learn about both hard and soft engineering methods for coastal management and their advantages and disadvantages. Nearly there, we also suggest revisiting flood risk for rivers, which involves knowing the physical and human factors that increase flood risk, such as precipitation, geology, urbanisation and deforestation. Case studies like the Boscastle or Cumbria floods will help and you'll need to interpret storm hydrographs and describe flood management strategies. So, for example, things like dams, flood relief channels and flood warnings. Finally, for paper one, we suggest revising managing glacial landscapes. Here, look at erosional and depositional features like U-shaped valleys, moraines and drumlins. Understand how these features form and how people use glaciated areas for tourism, hydroelectric power and farming. Learn about conflicts and management strategies in areas like Snowdonia or the Lake District. Okay, those are our predictions for paper one. Let's now move on to paper two. 
For AQA GCSE Geography Paper 2 predictions, here's what you need to focus on. First up, urban growth in LICs and NEEs. Here you need to look at the push and pull factors driving rural urban migration and the resulting growth of megacities. A case study such as Rio de Janeiro or Mumbai is essential. You need to understand the challenges faced by these cities. So for example, things like housing shortages, traffic congestion and waste management as well as the solutions being implemented like site and service schemes, self-help housing and improvements to education and healthcare. Be sure to use key terms such as urbanisation, informal economy and favela in your responses. Next, we have urban change in UK cities, and this will require a case study, which is typically London or Bristol. You should know the causes of urban change, such as deindustrialization and migration, and understand how these have affected the socio-economic and environmental aspects of the city. Learn about urban regeneration projects like the London Docklands or Bristol's Temple Quarter, and how cities are becoming more sustainable through improvements in transport green spaces and energy usage. Then our geography papers look at investment development projects as well. So here you focus on how global investment and foreign aid help LICs and NEEs develop. Use a named example such as China's investment in Africa or the Jubilee line extension in the UK. Understand how these investments improve infrastructure, create jobs and stimulate economic growth, but also consider the drawbacks, including rising debt, and increased inequality. Following that, we suggest you revise a UK transport infrastructure, and here you should look into improvements in roads, railways, ports, and airports. Key examples include HS2 and its pros and cons, the London Crossrail project, and the Liverpool 2 port expansion. Be ready to explain how these projects boost economic growth, reduce congestion, and enhance regional connectivity, while also weighing up their environmental and social impacts. Next is water quality in the UK. Here, brush up on why water quality matters for both health and the environment. You should understand how water quality is maintained through treatment plants and regulations and the causes of pollution such as agricultural runoff, industrial waste and sewage. Learn the strategies used to manage water quality, including regular monitoring, better treatment methods and public education campaigns. Our next predicted topic is food insecurity. This involves understanding its causes, such as climate change, poverty, conflict, and poor infrastructure. Case studies may include the Sahel region or Bangladesh. You'll need to know about sustainable solutions, such as irrigation schemes, genetically modified crops, and the use of appropriate technologies like drip irrigation systems. Then you should look at water insecurity, which requires knowledge of both physical scarcity, such as low rainfall and economic scarcity, where investment in infrastructure is lacking. Relevant case studies include the Sahel region in Africa, California and parts of South Asia. You should understand the impacts of water scarcity on health, agriculture and industry and be able to explain management strategies such as building dams, implementing water transfer schemes and promoting conservation practices. Now, last of all, we suggest revising en energy insecurity, which focuses on the causes, including rising demand, depletion of natural resources, political conflicts and over-reliance on fossil fuels. The consequences may include increased energy costs, international conflict and energy rationing. Case studies might involve Russia and Ukraine's gas supplies or the UK's transition towards renewable energy. Learn the various management strategies being used to address energy insecurity, such as diversifying the energy mix, expanding renewable energy use, fracking and promoting conservation. OK, those are our predictions for AQA GCSE Geography. As always, please do remember to revisit anything you feel nervous or worried about. But we wish you the very best of luck with all your GCSE exams in 2025.